Hey there, Care Blazers. Welcome to the place where we talk about everything dementia. In today's video, we're going to talk about a sensitive topic for a lot of people with dementia, and that is driving. This is gonna be part one of a three-part series on uh, the topic of dementia and driving. Today's uh, video, part one, is going to be focused on signs that your loved one may no longer be safe to drive. Um, so for starters, everybody with dementia at some point will have to stop driving. Um, that point changes for everybody, however. Just because you have dementia doesn't mean you automatically have to stop driving. Many people with dementia can go on to drive for quite a while. Um, it just depends on how severe their dementia is and what, uh, what brain functions are particularly affected. Um, so... Everybody will eventually have to stop driving if you have dementia, but that point in time changes. So here are some signs to look for um, that may suggest that your loved one is no longer safe to drive. Um, so if you're not commonly riding as a passenger with your loved one with dementia, you may want to uh, pay attention to any unexplained dents, scratches, uh, different paint chip uh, or paint marks on the car that may suggest that they're running into things um, whether it be property or other cars um, you may also want to pay attention if your loved one says that they are going to go um, run a quick errand maybe go to the store around the corner um, but then they're gone for an unusually long period of time that could suggest that maybe they're getting lost going to familiar areas um, it, especially if they're not able to explain to you um, what took them so long. Um, your loved one may be getting pulled over more frequently or getting citations. Um, so those are a few signs to look out for if you're not commonly in the car with your loved one. If you start to have suspicion, something you could consider would be you or a friend or a family member um, could follow your loved one carefully. Um, behind in another car just to observe and, and see how your loved one is driving that's a possibility if you're riding as a passenger with your loved one in the car um, you're going to be able to tell um, more easily whether or not your loved one may be struggling for instance are they having difficulty slowing down in time at stop signs and stoplights um, are they stopping at all at stoplights and uh, stop signs are they having difficulty staying in between the lines those are all things you'll be able to notice um, much easier um, if you're in the car with them um, so these are just some signs to look out for in uh, part two of the driving and dementia series we're going to talk about how to formally um, determine whether your loved one is safe to continue driving and then most challenging how to even talk to your loved one when it comes time to stop driving um, because that's not a decision that is taken very easily by most people um, it's associated with their independence and freedom it could be um, pretty life-changing to no longer be able to drive so in part two we'll talk about how to talk about that with your loved one um, and uh, if you have a loved one who is no longer able to drive because of dementia and you, you were noticing signs that started to make you suspicious that they couldn't drive anymore, um, leave those signs below. That might help a fellow careblazer out in determining um, whether or not they may need to further um, evaluate uh, if their loved one should continue to drive. Okay, thank you for watching.